Coach, we're heading into the second season for you here in the Shoals. Tell me a little bit about what you learned in the first season and what you're hoping to improve on this year. You know, I, th I thought we have a very resilient football team. You're, you're looking at a, a team that a year before had zero FCS wins. The only win was a, a very close D2 win um, that, that had, had kind of been a little down and out, beaten up, and, and come into last year and, and have seven out of 11 games you had a lead in at some point, most of them going into halftime. Um, we knew that we needed more depth. That's a, a lot of the reason why you can't hold on to a lead is because you need to increase your depth a little bit. Um, but we have a group that never quit, that never uh, stopped fighting, even all the way down to playing Florida State on national television in front of 1.3 million people, uh, where no one in the world gave us a chance. And you come out and take a 13 nothing lead, it's 24 to 13 and a half. Um, I didn't think our kids ever backed down. They never quit. So I learned that we've got a, a team that doesn't quit for sure. When you think back to that Florida State game, as you said, you had so many eyes on you guys. You guys went up 13 nothing. What do you think that did for the confidence of the team, even though it wasn't the end result you were hoping for? You know, it really catapulted our off-season workouts um, where, where you got guys like Edwin White Schultz or um, you, you got Gage Sane, our, our leader up front, that can come and address the team afterwards and say, listen, guys, you saw tonight for a quarter what this team could have been. You saw tonight for a half what this team could have been. And we don't want to look at each other next year um, and say what could have been. We want to perform like this. We want to play like this at all times. It, it sent a message to our coaching staff that I think that game we, we had more trick plays than we ever had before. Uh, it really sent a message to us that, that um, it, it really fuels our guys to do little things like that a little bit more often. So um, we, we may pull out the bag of tricks a little bit more than, than we had been. But um, I think for our guys, it really catapulted us into a great off-season workouts. So looking at where things are this season, you recently named Ari Patu your starting quarterback. What was it about him that distinguished himself? I know he's somebody that you had some previous experience with. You know, Ari uh, uh, gives the look for sure. He's, he's a 6'4 and a half. Um, QB, and the, the, the culture, his background he comes from, there, there's never too high, there's never a too low, and that's a, a great quality to have as a quarterback. You know, look at uh, the tongue of Iloas, um, they're in the same mold. Um, so I think our team feeds off of that, where the, they know that when if he throws a touchdown pass, he's going to really act the same way if, if he made a bad decision. Um, and it keep, really helps us stay grounded. You know, he can run really well, um, so it, it adds the QB run element to our game. Um, but, but he really has all the tools. I mean, he had all the tools that uh, I think he was the youngest starting quarterback in the history of Stanford football. Um, got, got early starts there, played against Notre Dame. I mean, he's, he's played in some big-time football games, which is going to help him early on in this process for us. When you look at some of the guys he'll be throwing to, obviously you got TK back, someone who has as much experience as him, basically like having a coach on the field. What does he bring to the Lions? You know, TK, uh, there's so much experience there. There's not a coverage that he hadn't seen. Um, he, he's a consistent guy where if you got a QB sometimes that, that's looking for a completion, looking for an answer, um, you can always look to number five side. Um, but what, what's been really good for TK is we've increased the depth in that room where you, you were already pretty solid last year with the likes of Dakota Warfield and Kobe Ward and J.J. Evans. Um, but you add on to that room with Tanaka Scott, another 6'5 receiver, moved in from Kansas. Uh, a Logan Collier was an NAI All-American at Lindsey Wilson. That's really the speed guy. Um, that, that TK's been even better because he's had guys nipping at his heels in that room. So, and he knows it. Uh, he knows it's made him so he can't get comfortable every day. Obviously, everybody saw what Edwin White Schultz did last year, preseason defensive player of the year. What does that do for his confidence and for the team? Um, you know, I think that's the first time you'll have to ask Mike, uh, our, our, our SID, but I think it's the first time in the Division One history that we've had a preseason um, all-conference um, player. And, and for him, the, being the defensive player of the year, um, it, it says a lot about what he did last year. Now, what we reminded him as a staff is preseason awards mean nothing. Um, it just it, it's an extension of last season what the what the coaches in the league thought about you, and now I got to go out and I got to prove it again. Um, you know he he's a tackling machine. Um, he's he's basically an extra linebacker playing at, at ten yards deep. Um, his playmaking ability. I mean I, I I recruited him out of high school and he was committed to Tennessee. I convinced him to come to Kansas with us. Um, he was a receiver. He was a return man. Um, that was a few sprites and a few uh, Debbie cakes ago, but uh, he, he, he can make plays when he does get the ball. So um, he, he's uh, 
a very experienced player, played a lot of football, and he's helping our young guys back there grow a lot. This will be the second year in a row that you and your guys get to start on the national stage. What are you looking forward to about that? Uh, it's, it's awesome for our guys. It's awesome for UNA Athletics. It's amazing for our university for, for uh, the third time in a year span. The, the UNA Lion logo is on going to be on national television. You know, playing in this game last year, uh, played a, a team that ended up being a playoff team, had a 7 nothing lead early in the game, uh, and ended up being a one-score game most of the game. Um, I think it opened a lot of people's eyes to what we could be, and we were uh, going to be a contender. Um, and then, to, like we talked about earlier with the Florida State game and national eyes, but now we're, we're going to get to do it again to start the year off. And um, when you're not battling many other games and you're the game on, on ESPN, we know that you're going to have a national spotlight, especially on the first weekend of college football where people have been craving uh, college football again. So um, we, we know all eyes are on us. Now we got to go out and perform and, and put a, a good image of, of UNA out there. Last thing I got for you, you look right across the parking lot at the new facility that's going in. How much do you think everything you guys are doing this year and the promise of a new field will help you build the program? Uh, well, we, we've got evidence already. So at this point last year, we had two high school commitments at this point of the year. Right now we've got 18. Um, 16 of those 18 are from the state of Alabama. We've made a huge emphasis on getting kids on campus, especially in the last two months, because when they come on campus and they see bulldozers, when they see uh, fences being torn down, when they see some digging happening, it's no longer just a, a pipe dream. It's no longer uh, what could be down the road. It, it's happening. And uh, that has really been able to help us sell the vision. It's really been able to help us sell the future of this place. And this class is going to be sophomores. This incoming class will be sophomores that, that welcome in the new stadium uh, a few years from now. So it's making my job a little bit easier. Um, in the time being, it's making my job easier that we got the adversity of, of traveling every day to an off-campus practice facility. Uh, we look at it as an opportunity to get better every day. So there's so many different ways that, that this process out, out behind me here is really helping our, our program as a whole.